So, um, welcome all of you to our um, fifth meeting. This is our fifth online meeting. And um, I must say, um, activity has, has picked up considerably. Um, I've been teaching for a while. And um, got to excuse, excuse the glare on my glasses, but I can't see without I haven't figured out how to do it. That, that light is coming from the computer, so I haven't figured out an angle. I can look down like this, but uh, you just got to suffer with the glare. But uh, I've been teaching for a while, and um, one of the things that I noticed is that, you know, some people do and some people don't, right? And I'm noticing that in this group also, that there, there are those that are very active, very active. And, um, you know, a lot of folks sitting on the sidelines. And, you know, it's not up to me to, to try to force you to do anything. Um, I, I'm not looking to convince anybody of anything or persuade anybody of anything. Um, my role is to advise you of the opportunities. And for those of you that want to take advantage of those opportunities, um, try to maximize your probability of success. So, and the folks that want it, um, they're going to get it. Um, the folks that are waiting for something to happen magically, it ain't going to happen, right? It's not going to happen. I will tell you that we do have jobs. We've got a few jobs now. We've got an abundance of jobs coming down the road. So, um, there's no reason for anyone that wants a job in IT. And we're going to discuss some other jobs in manufacturing at Lockheed, 1,800 jobs. Um, but um, 1,800 jobs, that, uh, they're building a, another new fighter for the Department of Defense. And um, yeah, so there's no, if, if, if anybody wants a job in any type of, and these are technology jobs, they're not, you know, screwing bolts and all and stuff. These are, these are manufacturing is very technology rich these days. Um, and so anybody that wants a job in technology, there's no reason for them not to have one. But it's going to take some effort on the part of the individual. Uh, that's the sermon that you're going to hear over and over again. I know my students at A and T keep getting they get, they get hearing it, but that's that's the only sermon that I have. So I'm going through the agenda. The agenda for those of you, the agenda if you want to follow along, you don't have to. Uh, the agenda is on the website in the news section. Um, so first thing I wanted to talk about is <clears throat> how I see my role. So um, as Many or all of you know, I'm a university professor, and um, that role is rapidly evolving. Um, in days gone by, the professor was the sage on the stage, the, the repository of, in quotes, the, the repository of knowledge. And um, that knowledge was theoretically dispensed from the professor to the student. That never really worked that way. And that's not even my, my learning theory model, my, my learning theory model. We don't have time to go into it, but it's, um, it's not that. I've never seen myself at the stage on the stage. But um, we're moving away from the lecture model. Uh, and some people have already moved away from it um, because it's inefficient. Um, you only retain about 80% of what you, about 20% of what you hear. Um, so the role now, because there is so much content out there, so much, that my role is, is more to um, is more to um, facilitate and direct you in navigating this, this content so that you can build your skill set, in this case IT. Um, but when the manufacturing things come, and I'm not a, you know, I'm not a manufacturing professor, so, um, you know, my expertise there is very limited. But the process is always the same. Find out what needs to be learned. Find out what needs to be learned. And to, to facilitate your students uh, to, have, to develop a methodology of accessing that. And I'll give you a specific example. So I, I had posted. Um, several Python videos just to get folks started. Well, I only did three of them. Number one, they're not being viewed very actively. That's one of the great things about social media is that you can actually see um, the dynamics of engagement with your content, right? So um, 
and people weren't looking at them. Um, I didn't have a lot of views on the, the Python videos. Um, and, and so now I just decided to direct you to where you can get the same information on your own. So I'm not the dispenser of knowledge, okay? I am the facilitator to lead you to where the knowledge is and how you can build your skills and provide you know, some clues as to um, the number of TV's on in the background. I got to use it. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Let me turn it off because it's distracting. Um, to provide you some clues about how to maximize your probability of success. So that's my role. Uh, I'm a facilitator. And we'll talk a little bit more about the YouTube site. I'm, I'm really pleased with what I see in the YouTube site. And you guys, with your viewing activity, you're teaching me what I need to do more of, what I need to let, do to do less of. So we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, so whereas before I saw these kind of um, these discussion sessions as being instructional, that was my first thought, you know, because um, there's really been no plan for all of this. The plan has come together week to week. Uh, we had a plan when we had funding. We had a whole project plan for the year, but the funding got got lifted, and so we had to um, fall back on Plan B. You know, I had a choice of to either drop the whole thing because I'm not getting any. I'm not getting paid for this, right? This is not. I'm doing this kind of on my own time, in quotes, if you will. Um, I'm not getting paid for it, but um, I had a decision to make. Did I want the headaches of trying to trying to keep this thing alive until I get some more funding. Now, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to get some funding down the road. Sometime this year, I'm going to get some funding from somewhere. Um, you know, IBM or the federal government or Cisco or, or, um, or you know, a combination thereof. But um, I decided, yeah, no, this is, this is too important because there are people out there that really, really are ready to get careers in IT. And all they need is a conduit. Uh, you see, I've talked with several of you this week, and resumes are just really, really impressive. And um, there is no conduit to move people like that if you don't have an IT degree and you don't have IT experience, but you're really sharp and you learn quickly. There's no conduit to move people like that into the industry. There, there just isn't. It doesn't exist. You know, it doesn't exist. So. And there are a lot of people out there, I don't know how many, but there are a lot of people out there that are ready to go to work, right? And ready for career changes of all ages. One of the, one of the, the is a lady, you know, I guess her 30s or 40s or something like that. Um, and she, she's had a career, she's had a career, she's got skills, just not in IT. And she wants to make a conscious career change to a career in IT. And I think that's very commendable. And she certainly can do it. I mean, it's, I, I have every confidence to be. But there is no vehicle to, to move those people. There's nobody that says, look, company, this is a person that you need to look at. There's nobody doing that. So that's what this project is, is about. And as time goes on, and I, I'm, 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 I'm pleased with our project. We were a little slow getting started, but I'm pleased with the development. We've got some hardcore commandos out there. I see several of you. Um, on the call, you know, several of y'all spoken with you. You know who you are. I don't need. I don't call people out. I don't. I don't. Um, I respect people's confidentiality. Um, but we're gonna get it done. And I mean, I'm really pleased with where we are. You know, I'm really pleased. And I'm. Uh, you know, a year from now, um, this project is gonna look a lot different than it does today. Um, but so far, I'm, I'm happy. You know, I'm, I'm happy. I see folks online. I'm here, so. Um, but uh, so the first item was my role as facilitator, and, and um, you know that's just kind of how I see it. Um, now let me give you a BB and T update. So <clears throat> um, I think everybody on the line um, on the call is aware that BB and T is um, has um, one job now and several jobs upcoming later this month or in February. Right, the job now is a Linux Unix job. It's only one job. And we've got some candidates. We've got some good candidates. Matter of fact, all five of them, you know, all five of the ones that we're we're talking to, 
um, are serious candidates for this position. And um, we have a, we're gonna, we're gonna interview them. The teams, the lead IT teams gonna interview them, all of them, and um, probably move all the resumes. And the, the resumes I've seen, I've, I've seen no reason um, to not move them forward to BB&T. And how many of them they're going to interview? I don't know. I do know the person, the, the decision maker. I know him, been knowing him about 10 years. He's serious and he's going to hire somebody, right? And he wants that person to be an apprentice. So um, that looks good. Now, the, the, they have um, some networking jobs, 12 to 15 networking jobs coming up in um, later this month or in February. Um, good, good entry level jobs. Now, several people, several of you on the line have said, well, I don't want to do anything other than mainframe. And that's fine. I have no problem with that. That's fine. Mainframe is a good place to be. You know, the, the money's better than any other job in IT that I know of to start for, with no experience. Um, as I said, you know, we, we're, we're starting people at A&T now at 92. You know, certain companies are starting them at $92,000 a year. For a 21, 22 year old or 22, 23 year old, I guess they'd be 22 when they finish. Um, that's really good money. I mean, I don't know, <laughs> you know, um, I wasn't even making, you know, I didn't make $92,000 coming out of school back, you know, the, 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 the back in the dark ages, the equivalent of $92,000 back in the dark ages. So that's a good place to be. Now, those people are degree, but th th that's the, the whole purpose of the apprenticeship. Um, and then all, th there's a thing also that you have to understand that as an apprentice, you're going to make less money than um, that job normally pays. Now, once you complete your apprenticeship, you'll be brought up to, to market, right, to market rate. But initially, it'll be 60%, 70%, 80%. That's up to the company. I don't think they can go any lower than 60% of the market rate for the job. Um, and, you know, I talked to a couple people, and, and, can, and, you know, for these positions, so these are not mainframe positions. And they said, well, they had to take a pass because the, the apprenticeship money probably was not as much as they were making on, in their current job. And I, I get that. I mean, that's the decision that you have to make case by case. I mean, I respect that. Um, you need to get your number. But I want everyone to be realistic about what this is. I mean, this is not a, um, a, quick, a quick path to big money. It is just a, a path to big money. And uh, I got some other entrepreneurial things down the road, but right now let's just focus on jobs. You know, we all need to figure out how to make a buck ourselves and have multiple streams of income, but this is not, you know, I'm not going to hit you with network marketing or anything like that. It's not a sales pitch. But that's, that's my hope because um, corporate America, um, and I'm not going to bash corporate America because right now corporate America is hiring my students and allowing them to pay back their student loans, right? And one company, you know, um, I think after two years, they paid $10,000 of your student loan, um, lump sum. Um, I'm not going to name the company because um, it's you know, not, not for public consumption, but um, that, that's, that's my ultimate goal is for us to, you know, I'm working on some business things myself, but that's, that's not germane to this conversation. This conversation is about basically corporate jobs. We will be working with with um, state agencies as time, I mean, government agencies as time goes on, federal government. But um, we're about jobs, and I'm going to keep the conversation limited to that. But understand that my long-term plans are much broader than just teaching you how to get a job okay? or showing you how to get a job. Um, that's the bb &T update, Linux networking. Um, now, let's talk about the Lockheed Martin jobs. I was on the phone with IBM yesterday, and IBM is a partner with Lockheed Martin, and Lockheed Martin is going to put on uh, in the course of this year, uh, 1,800 people in uh, somewhere in Texas. I don't know if it's somewhere in Texas. And I think they paid relocation. I'll find it out. Um, don't have a lot of specifics on the job, but I know like he's going to do it because they got the contract to build a jet, right? They're building a fighter, some fighter for the Department of Defense. Now, you're probably going to have a need to have a security clearance. I don't know that explicitly, but that's my assumption because um, we're still in preliminary um, discussions about what these jobs are, and they're going to be apprenticeships. I don't know if all 1,800 are going to be apprenticeships, but an appreciable number of them will be apprenticeship jobs, because that Lock Lockheed believes in the apprenticeship model, even for manufacturing. Um, it's in advanced manufacturing, but as I said, um, was I was, I was telling well, one of the candidates 
um, before you guys got on that um, all manufacturing is technology laden now, technology rich. So they, they, I'm, I'm not aware of my conversation with IBM. Um, and I know the guy Blackie Martin too, but I, I hadn't spoken with him recently. Um, I'm not clear about the specific skill set they, they want you to have coming in. Uh, I think, and, and this is just from me, just from my preliminary conversation, they just want some sharp people because they've got a training program, right? They've got, they're got they gonna have to train everybody in how to build this plane, right? There's nobody gonna come there. They're not gonna hire anybody that knows how to build this plane, right? Um, because this is a new plane. Um, so they've got a training program. Um, those are those, and they're gonna be more. I mean, they're gonna be more. There is just an ocean of work out there for people. Um, let me give you a stat, and this was from 2016. There were 600,000 unfilled IT positions in 2016. 600,000. 600,000. The sum total of all computer science pro, pro, um, graduates in the whole country that year was 42,000. If you double that to add to include MIS, I don't know, I don't have the number for MIS graduates, but I, it probably isn't more than computer science graduates. Um, let's call it 100. You still got a shortfall of 500,000 for 2016. Now, because I know we didn't fill all those jobs, that number has probably gone up. Because, um, and this is on one of the YouTube videos, 10,000 for the, over the next 10 years, 10,000 people a day are going to turn 65. 10,000 people every day are going to turn 65. So there, there's just going to be an unimaginable need for folks, but they can't use you if you're not ready, right? The folks that are ready are going to get the goodies. Um, and these, these are great careers. Um, so when I get more information about Lockheed, I'll, I'll either post it on the website or uh, you know, send you an email or something, but I'll, I'll keep you in the loop on that. And that's going to be um, starting this spring. Um, maybe around the March time frame. Cisco, Cisco has an apprenticeship program, okay? Um, I think most of you know the company Cisco. And a and was the first school that they piloted this with, and San Jose State was a little late. San Jose, um, Cisco's in San Jose. But because there are a lot of a and alums that push this internally, um, a and was the first one. Now, not at all to my surprise, Cisco is not getting remotely the numbers that they're looking for, right? So I'm working with them and the state of North Carolina Office of Apprenticeship to see what we need to do it to expand um, those numbers. And so it's probably going to include non-degree apprentices. So um, I'll give you an example what they look, they were looking for 50 a year. And I think they got maybe three from A and T. Three. They look for fifty. They got three. So um, those are coming. I'll keep you posted there. Let's talk about master the mainframe a little bit. So master the mainframe. The, the official contest is over. And I only posted uh, eight videos for the first eight challenges. Um, number one because I didn't have enough time um, to do it. I you know I had other things to do. So I didn't have time to make the video. I made eight of them. Um, and, but another reason is that, you know, you need, to, you need to learn how to start figuring some of this stuff out on your own. I have no problem getting you started, telling you which direction to go in, showing you where the door is. But I can't go through the door for you. I can't go through it for you. I'm not going to try. Um, if I need to go through the door for you, then you're not, yeah, you're not. The right person for what we're trying to do if i have to do everything for you i may have said this before but ibm has a what they call learning system which is the same activity same challenges as master the mainframe the contest um but it's not a contest there's no winner right there's no winner um, but you get the same recognition for the same levels of completion so Somebody that, that, that does it in the spring, for example, instead of the fall, 
Um, while they can't win the contest, they get the same resonance with industry because everybody that uses mainframe knows about master the mainframe and it is currency um, in the mainframe sector of the IT industry. Uh, so, and all you have to do is go to the same site that you got your master the mainframe um, ID, password, and just click on the learning system, right? You'll see right there learning, same site, um, but just click on learning system and you, it, it's, it's different. So you will have a different ID and password than you did in the fall. Um, like in the fall, it was Z00 something, right? So it'll be different, but it's the same thing, same things. And so I will maybe put a couple more videos out there on that um, to help you along. Um, but that's massive mainframe. And then th those of you, uh, I see several, uh, uh, several of you on the call, specifically want careers in mainframe. Master the mainframe is step one toward a career in mainframe, right? Um, very lucrative, lucrative careers, very interesting work. And um, um, yeah, so you do well, master the mainframe. Um, I put some courses, let me share the screen because I put some courses I wanna, I want you to, I wanna make sure that you know where this stuff is. Um, let me share my screen here. So there's a company called Interskill. That's an IBM um, business partner. Let me see if I can kill this without killing the meeting. Yeah, okay, that worked fine. That worked fine. Um, yeah, Interskill is an IBM business partner. And they have several courses that are free, right? That are free. And they're here. So you go here and you add this thing to the cart. There's no card, card, but they'll send you an email and show you how to access the course. And there's a badging that you can get. So IBM's customers, they, they understand when you earn a badge, that badge, badge resonates. Yeah, and so these are courses here. Um, the Cobalt course is excellent, actually. Um, I've taken several of these myself. And so, so you can see that um, it's a very rich repository that's inner skill, and that's on the website. Um, let's look at the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel um, has been picking up quite a bit. Um, and so I have two kind of talks. Um, you know, I, I think about like TED Talks or something. Um, one's on, I, I made the first one, Careers in Mainframe first. You need to look at this one so you can understand if somebody just so, you know, it was a, a 104 a minute ago, and that's 105. So every day, you know, a couple more people. And, I, you know, I understand. I mean, I would, I would like to have 10,000 views, right? No problem. But I'll take what I can get. I mean, as long as it's, it's, it's not stagnant, I'm happy. Um, I don't, humble beginnings don't bother me. Um, as I say all the time, um, journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Step one. Then you take the next step, then you take the next step. So, um, but the careers in mainframe, if you haven't viewed that, please do, because it explains to you why you should be interested in this, right? Why a career mainframe is of interest. But what I didn't do in this video here. And it's 22 minutes long. That's longer than I want, you know, longer than I really want to. But I, I needed to get through the whole presentation. It's a presentation that I did. So I wanted to do the entire presentation on video. Um, but I, I normally like um, video between five and 10 minutes. You know, that's, that's as long as you need video. Um, but I didn't, um, in that one, um, in this one, I didn't tell people how to join Lead IT, right? I didn't give them the website, I didn't do any of that. So I did that in this video and it's, it's about nine minutes long. So here is about, about careers in IT in general, not just mainframe, but including mainframe, including mainframe. So those are two videos that are up um, that people seem to be um, picking up pace with. Now on the Python video, so I, I put a couple of Python videos because I, I think you guys know 
um, I preach. Um, if you want to create an IT, the first thing to do is learn how to write code. Um, not be a deep dive programmer, you know, but just write, learn how to write simple programs, right? Because it's really hard to work in IT these days if you don't know um, the, the basics of programming. Now, I think Python is a great language. It's not the easiest language. It's easy. no, Python's easy, but there are easier languages. Uh, Rex, really, is probably the easiest language to learn. Um, and if you are interested in mainframe, then Rex is essential that you learn Rex. And this, this is an embarrassingly easy language to learn. Uh, but the, the reason I'm using Python is that I just like the interface. I like the, the learning tool that um, they have up there. It, it's really, you know, it's, it's transparent. So it's a, it's a really good way to learn programming. And they have, you know, it's interactive and it's just, it's just good. That's Code Academy. I, I used to say Code Academy. It's Code Academy. Um, and so I decided, well, you know, I'm only getting a couple of views on these things. So I said, well, I just tell people where to, where to get the information. And so the site codecademy.org is where you need to go. There's no point in me. Um, and that, and again, that goes back to my comments about being a facilitator. There's really no point in me reinventing the wheel. If somebody's already got some good content out there, um, if they've got some good content, really no reason for me to redo the content, just tell you where it is. And then maybe do some narration to kind of give you, if you want to do a Q&A about it, that's fine. But um, really no reason for me to reinvent the wheel. Um, so the last thing on my agenda is programming. Let's talk about programming a little bit. Um, programming is real important and you really need to expose yourself to programming. Um, I put programming just a little bit ahead of Linux. It's important to learn Linux also. I've got some excellent Linux um, links too, to YouTube videos that I'm, I haven't posted them on the website, but I will. Uh, I sent them out to some, some people, but um, it's... Um, there are a lot of opportunities in Linux. And Linux, for people in IT, Linux is almost essential. Um, but programming is, is just a little bit ahead of Linux in terms of importance. It, it, particularly object-oriented programming, um, it just helps you understand. It forces you to think logically. Programming is based on logic, right? Logic and syntax. Um, and so it's really important to learn how to write code. Um, so let me see, was there anything else that I wanted to do? All right, I'll throw it open for questions. Um, let me open my chat so I can see if there's any, anybody that, where's my chat, where's my chair it is? Wait a minute, now where's the chat? I thought I turned it on. Okay, yeah. So, um, you know, this is the this open Q&A. You can unmute your mics and just ask questions. If, yeah, Andrea, please. I'm sorry, I had to unmute. Hi, Cam, and hi, everyone on the call. Yeah, hi. Um, Hi, I have a question regarding um, the apprenticeships. Can yeah. candidates participate in more than one, especially um, in, in trying to have an opportunity to get exposure and experience in varying platforms? That's, that's a good question. Um, that's a very good question. So, so Let's back up and, and explain exactly what an internship, I mean, what an apprenticeship is. Because I have students all the time that, that go through a series of internships, right? So let's say they get an internship at the end of their freshman year, end of their sophomore year, end of their junior year, right, in different places. Apprenticeships kind of don't work that way, Andrea, because you're hired by the company. You're hired by them, right? That, that when you take the apprenticeship, 
the expectation is that's where you're going to be blessed. That's the start of your career. So, okay. so <laughs> you know, you can now, now you can probably do sequential apprenticeships. You can do an apprenticeship with a company and then do it a, another apprenticeship with a, with another company. But those are two kind of, you know, the company is, is expecting you to stay there, right? When you take the apprenticeship. Now you don't have to stay. It might not be for you. It's, it's, it's still, you know, you're married until you get a divorce, right? You're married until you get a divorce. But I certainly understand your um, desire to, um, your desire to, to, to have multiple experiences. Um, probably, I, I don't know this to be the case. I, I think we may be able to work out more internship programs for apprentices, if that makes any sense. So you're, you're not you're not a degree person in the field. I know many of you have degrees. It's just not in the stuff that you're trying to find, the job that you're trying to find. And you're not in school now. Um, so there's not really a model for that, but that's not to say that there can't be. So there, if there arises a need for people to have internships before they accept an apprenticeship, I, I'll see if I can work it out. We don't have that right now. But I don't know why that's not possible. I mean, if they give an internship to a um, to a student, um, and they give a, an apprenticeship to a non-student, I don't know why they wouldn't give an internship to a non-student. I mean, it's still you know they want to they want to feel you out and determine um, you know whether or not they want to hire you. Now, right. internships are trial before you buy, so they haven't really bought you. They haven't bought you. They haven't made a commitment to you. When you, had, when you get an apprenticeship, the company has made a commitment to you. They're like, okay, if you work out, if you work out, you will be hired. Internships don't make that promise. Now, it usually works out that they're, they're really trying to see if you, if you want to work. They select you because they think you're, you're, I'm talking about internships now. They think you are potentially a good candidate for their company long term. And the internship is to kind of fill you up. But no promises are made. No promises are made. Right. In a apprenticeship prom, you know, in a, in a apprenticeship promises are made. Promises are made coming in the door. Okay. Now, they and, can, and I get that. Um, yeah. Thank you. I think yeah. I was maybe thinking of it more along the lines of, since we're, most of us, uh, well, I'll speak for myself, don't have experience in that field. I was thinking of it more of along the lines of almost going through um, um, a medical residency where you're learning, you know, what's, what's your specialty? You know, yeah. where do you really thrive? You know what's oh. going to be the best fit for you. Well, now, well, now understand that that, that in, in many ways that is going to be the nature of the apprenticeships that you that you get. I mean, they're, they're, they 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 have a training program, right? And what they used to do, what what well, I, let's take Bank of America. Bank of America would take interns and run them through cycles, so they'll do database for two weeks. They'll do web for two weeks. They'll do program okay. two weeks. They'll do network for two weeks. But that's in the course of their internship that summer. Now I don't know why they couldn't do why they wouldn't do the same thing with apprenticeship, even though you're hired for a specific job. Um, I don't know why they couldn't rotate you um, through various roles in the company, and that makes sense for them to do okay. that to see exactly okay. where you fit the best. Even in mainframe, see mainframe is a broad is a is a is a broad spectrum. Um, there's mainframe has the same um, pockets that IT does in general. There's database, there's networking, there's web, uh, there's programming, software development, um, et cetera, right? And so even in the mainframe field, what they do mainframe and Bank of America, those those, those were mainframe interns, and they would to give them to well, they would send them to different um, different business units. So this week you're going to be working with the web sphere people. Next week, you're going to be working with the networking people, et cetera. So, the, the, yeah, but I get your point. Um, and if that becomes a pervasive need, because a lot of people, they just want a job. I mean, they just want a good job. They don't really care what it is, but they just want a good job. But there are people that want to like, okay, I want to find out really what do I like the most? What do I like the most? And so, you know, that model definitely can be fleshed out. Um, um, I, I'm not opposed to it. I have no... No problem with that. And, and I'll bring it up to the companies. Um, okay, thank you because, for that. Yeah, I mean, understand it's only around 50% of the companies really say that they 
are willing to embrace the apprenticeship model. And so we've got a sales job to do on the on the other 50 percent to say, look, this makes sense. This makes good business sense for everybody. And as that as that pool expands, um, as that pool expands, um, the model will be refined, right? The model, will be, and it may include it. We may say, you know, so so. Let's take a company. I, that this is this is not real. Well, I, I'll just say company X, right? Company X wants twenty mainframe apprentices. Now, five of them they want to do. They want to put in time with the networking group. Five of them they want to put with the database group. Um, and so the business users come in and say, well, we need five people. But there are going to be some of them that they say, look, we don't really know where we, we, we coming in the door, we don't know where you will fit best. We want to find out where you fit best. So mm -hmm. I, I, that model, I think that model is very feasible. I've got a question. Did, did that answer your question? You did. Thank you. I've um, got a question from um, Jamie. How many people will be hired by by the BBT job? No, I mean, well, okay, so so let, let, let's get down specific. So there's one, one, number one, um, Linux Unix job now. There are going to be 12 to 15 networking jobs, 12 to 15 networking jobs uh, later this month or in the February, March timeframe. And then after that, sky's the limit. They, they, they're trying to. Um, bring a lot of jobs. I'm not. I'm not going to hold them to a number, but it could be up to several hundred. Don't hold them to that. But they're trying to bring a lot of these offshore jobs um, that are in India now. They're trying to bring them back domestically. So um, yeah, that's the that's the clearest I can give you. Um, but I mean, my advice to everybody would be just get ready. Just get ready. Um, you know, there's a time to worry about the where's and, and the how's. But right now, you, you need to be, if you don't have, if you have good IT skills, if you have an IT background, fine, you're fine. You're probably overqualified for an apprenticeship. That's fine. If your IT skills are soft, you need to be focusing on your IT skills. Irrespective of BB and T Cisco, where if, trust me, if you believe anything I say, there are going to be jobs because the numbers are crazy in terms of the need for IT skills, right? The need for IT skills. So just get ready. But B, 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 B and T, those are specific that I have. Um, definite job, one definite job, and then 12 to 15 jobs that are going to be solidified uh, later this month or in February, March, and then, you know, going toward the summer. God only knows how many. And, and what's true for BB&T, the thing I like about the banking industry is that if one bank needs it, all banks need it. So there's no problem that BB&T has in isolation. They all have the same problem. They all need people, and they're going to need more people. Now, certain companies like, like Bank of America, they've been ahead of the curve. I've been working with Bank of America since I was at North Carolina Central, since 2006, 2007. My first mainframe hires were at Bank of America. Well, actually, they were at IBM. Really. That was only two. But we hired like 17 people at Bank of America. But they saw this coming. See, they saw this coming. And they had the money to prepare for. A lot of the companies haven't had the money to look to the future. They, you know, they quarter to quarter. Um, and now they need people. And so the apprenticeship model for them is almost a no-brainer. You know, it's almost a no-brainer. It's a way that they can have vetted candidates um, with with at least entry level skills, and can pay them less money for a period of time while they're while they're getting up while they're training. Um, so that's about. Um, I hope that answered your question. But that's about the you know all the information they have about BB and T specifically. But everybody just get ready. That's my advice. And I see several of you on the call that are doing just that. I mean, a lot of you I don't know, uh, but several of you I know you're getting ready. And it's going to pay off. I tell my students all the time at a and when I see what they're doing, I'm like, that is going to pay off. I can't tell you exactly when. I can't tell you exactly how. But I know, I've been at this long enough to know, that what you are doing is going to pay off. And I've never been wrong. I've never been, not one time ever been, have I seen a student that worked hard, that focused, 
that was ready for the opportunity, that didn't eventually get the opportunity. I had one guy, um, he's in MetLife now. This lad, uh, he, he was a, a decent student, but his GPA wasn't astronomical. It was over three. Three is like the magic line in, in higher ed for people who gets an interview. Um, and he would, you know, he made that. But he got interview after interview, and he's well spoken. He was a sharp guy, and he was just frustrated, almost in tears, terrified. Actually, I wasn't even worried. I wasn't even worried at all because I knew he was going to get placed. And guess what? He got placed. He got he. he how many times have you guys seen somebody turn down a job at Goldman Sachs? Goldman Sachs offered a job, and he turned him down because he had a better offer, and it wasn't the money. Goldman Sachs that actually offered him more money. It wasn't the money. It was some other things, you know location and job role, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I've never seen it not pay off. So, and some of you hear me and some of you, some of you hear me and you kind of don't hear me. And I, you know, I'm used to it. Doesn't, I don't take it personally, but trust me, the ones, there, there are several of you on this call, I know, I have no doubt in my mind, not a scintilla of doubt that this is going to pay off for you. Not a scintilla. Of, I've been doing it too long and I know the need too well. I know the industry too well. There's a need out there that's that's unmistakable, right? Unmistakable. And these companies aren't hiring these these um, African American students from rural Eastern North Carolina. Who, I mean, w w one girl, she the first time she's been on an airplane with, at, at, a, at a share. Class. She got four job offers. Everybody at share wanted to hire these kids. Everybody, everybody wanted to hire. Them. She's from from Plymouth. <laughs> If anybody's on the call in North Carolina, you know where Plymouth is. I mean, well, you might not. It's, it's the country. It's the country. Far eastern North Carolina, rural. I, I have a lot of students from eastern North Carolina, the poorest part of the state. And these companies are hiring them to give these, these, these students an opportunity. They, they, don't, they can care less about these students. They're hiring them because they need to hire them. They need them. They got to have them. And one thing I know for sure, this world cannot live without mainframe. It can't do it. That the global economy cannot function without mainframe. If you believe anything, believe that. It can't function. And these companies, some of them are in a panic now because they look at their shop floor and 80% of their workforce is within five years of retirement age. 80%. Some of them more than that. Some of them, you know, 100% um, are within 10 years of, of uh, retirement. And they have made, they've made no, put, and they're in a panic because they need they need these people, they need people that understand mainframe. So um, that's what I'll say about that. That's, that's that sermon. Uh, any other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, well, on the topic of the networking job, um, I currently have a little bit of knowledge in subnetting, and I'm mm -hmm. currently working on a CSENT certification. Um, is there anything else you would recommend me to work on? No, nah, that's fine. I mean, I think I think for, for those jobs that are coming up, you're well qualified, you're well positioned because they're going to hire people. And I tell you right now, in lead IT, we don't have enough to, if the guy asks me for, because they want to look at like 40 resumes to fill those 12 to 15 jobs. I don't have 40 resumes. So I don't have 40 resumes. So I can tell you that they're going to hire people that have less qualifications than you have right now. I can tell you that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well positioned. Um, and they, 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 they have a, a training program also. Um, so yeah, those, those jobs are real. And, they, and they're very excited about it because they see for them it's a win-win, right? It's a win for you and it's a win for them. Um, so those, those, are gonna, those are real. Those are going to happen. I have no doubt about those. Um, anybody else? Any other questions? And you can uh, you can send it to the chat room if you don't if your mic's not working or um, you don't um, you know you don't want to don't want to speak. Um. Yeah, I will say this. Let me, and this is hard thing because I work with undergraduates, and I know several of you on the call that you're, you know, you're non-traditional. I mean, you're, you know, um, over thirty, and um, so I'm not speaking to you per se, but um, you got to embrace this stuff. This, this, this is not going to come to you. You got to be aggressive. 
you got to be aggressive. Um, and you got to have confidence in your ability to, to understand this stuff. You know, IT is not, it's not brain surgery. It really isn't brain surgery. Now, does it require intelligence? Absolutely it does. But it's not rocket science. You don't need to take a course in differential equations to, to be a database administrator. Um, I know several people that have had full careers in mainframe from, from entry to retirement. They don't have college degrees and they were functioning at the highest technical levels. I know one guy worked for IBM at RTP and he is one of the leading technical gurus in what their, their, what their, um, their communications piece. He's a networking guy. And um, I, that's why I always laugh when people say, Dr. Say, I don't want to do mainframe. I want to do networking. I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, go do networking then. But I knew him for like two or three years before I, somebody told me he didn't even have a college degree. And he is, and he can teach. The students love, he can teach. That's the main thing. We, we, you know this stuff when you can teach it, right? Um, well, that's all I have. I'm not gonna belabor the point. We're, um, we're about at quarter till now. So um, if nobody has anything else to say, we'll meet again next week. And um, I'll keep you guys posted on all developments. Go to the YouTube channel, look at the videos, do the CCNA um, stuff for the, the networking jobs coming up at BB&T. That oh, CCNA, CCNA um, videos on the YouTube channel. Oh, well, let me show you where that is because it, it's not, it's, uh, you, you have to look at the playlist. So here's the playlist here. Yeah. So yeah. Um, this is where they're, yeah, make sure you go to the, I've got some, some good Python videos. There's an intro to computer science there, intro to programming, intro to IT, if you know nothing about IT. Um, one of the, one of the um, candidates, one of the participants, one of, well, on one of the, uh, the um, community members sent me an excellent kind of vocab thing about IT, um, but, you know, terms that everybody should be familiar with, and I'll, I'll make that available to people. One way, or either on the website or, just emailing you. I, I'm trying to get away from email because email is like like the worst way to communicate. Um, I'm still trying to work on the um, find a replacement for the portal for the forum. Um, but uh, we'll 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 cover that. You can't do Rome wasn't built in a day, so. Um, well, um, oh, I didn't wish everybody happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody! I didn't talk to y'all in uh, I hadn't talked to y'all in, um, in in 2018. Happy New Year! So. We'll meet again, same time, same channel next week. Uh, everybody be uh, healthy and happy until we meet again. And um, with that, I'll close. I think I will anyway, let me see, how do I? There it is, in the meeting. And I'll post this uh, video um, on YouTube.